it's a month later and I'm back doing a little roundup of the books that I've read for this month unscripted again so you have to bear with me if I forget everything that I'm going to be saying okay so this month the books that I've read I finished Tragedy and Hope this was a huge book this was massive and I actually think it's just a really big achievement on my part to even complete this book it was absolutely huge okay so this is Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley and I'd heard lots of people talk about this book um, and um, so what it is it's sort of giving a sort of picture of where we are in the world it was written in the 1960s and it goes into quite a lot of detail um, from sort of 1900 up until the 60s covering the First World War, the Second World War, goes into detail about the politics and the economics shaping the decisions that were made. There's also a brief history about many of the um, components in those areas such as Britain, the USA, Russia and other European countries and other parts of the world. Um, it was very, very interesting very interesting I definitely feel like I have learned a lot I don't know how much of it I'm going to remember but it was really interesting and I think what it got across a lot for me was how different um, people are from different areas in the world and how differently they view the world and um, how they make their decisions in different ways and we do sort of know this um, but it's always good to be reminded of that I think it's one of the reasons why I I don't really believe in strong federalized systems because individual countries, I mean, are very different just in different areas of the country, um, let alone treating all countries the same. It's another good reason for no one world governments or anything like that. We are very different and we have different desires, driving forces and interests. Um, Quigley also talks about the different ways that um, civilizations or countries have got to where they are. So you have some countries that may have a slow progression with democracy evolving and political structures and then, um, you know, development of manufacturing and arms and things like that. Whereas other countries are coming straight in at a higher level of manufacturing and arms, maybe without the build up of democracy and, thing, and how that changes outlook and things like that. So it was really, really interesting. I'm really glad I read it. It is also just one man's opinion. So, you know, everything you've got to take that into account. But I do really feel like he has gone to a lot of effort to just try to explain the situation to just try and explain what's going on and not to oversimplify oversimplify things too much um, and say, do you know what? It is really complicated. There's that going on. There's that group of people who want influence. There's, there's those people behaving like that. And there's that group. Of, and, and, and what another thing that was really interesting about it is um, how pretty much all the countries have a very similar system of a very small ruling minority and a large group of people um who don't really have a lot of say in what's going on um you know so it's always interesting you know most normal people are very reasonable just want to get on with life and not really interested in wars or going into other countries and getting involved and interfering with other countries or having ridiculously large economies or anything like that most people just want normal everyday life however <laughs> If you have a kind of psychopathic mentality, you're probably going to get to the top of society. Um, and uh, those people tend to want world domination and, you know, incredible financial wealth to a ridiculous level. And uh, well, they cause all the problems, don't they? Um, so it gets to where we are in the mid 60s. And um, at that point, you've just got the beginning of the sort of European economic community. You've got the Cold War. Um, he gives a few predictions about what's going to happen. Um, let's have a look at what I wrote down that I should be talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, different countries, histories and developments, politics and finances, social organisation. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting, he goes into quite a lot of detail about World War I, um, the interwar period. World War Two and the post-war period. And I have to be honest, a lot of this I didn't really know about, like the details. 
so that was really really interesting um i read the phony victory um by peter hitchens last year i think um which i did a review for and i i remember saying then that i was surprised how much i don't know actually about what really went on in the first world war or the things leading up to it i mean i know what i learned at school um i know about the rise of the nazis the home front um concentration camps things like that but the actual wars and what the i don't didn't really know much about it. so that was really interesting and i and i really feel like i learned a lot about the um, manoeuvring and things of different countries and and how things developed so it was really really interesting really glad i read that i'm just going to quickly go through the contents and see if there's anything i've missed i think is really important blah 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 blah, blah. yeah he talks as well about sort of civilizations and how civilizations develop and also how they dissolve and that the western civilization really in one way or another throughout europe and the usa has kind of kept reinventing itself to last for a really long time and he's sort of saying are we at a point now where it's going to end where it's going to dissolve or is it going to change and reinvent itself and continue as this sort of big dominant thing that it is so that was interesting um <clears throat> other thing i found really interesting was hearing a bit more history of other countries like russia and the usa because i don't actually know that much really about the usa things like um you know the american civil war and things like that i think that would be really interesting to look into further um a history of even like germany you know and how it became unified and things like that was all really interesting and and it, and it also gives you a bit more of an idea of people's mindsets and how they go out into the world um it talks about um the appeasement um program which was really interesting i mean obviously in hindsight considered very misguided it's also quite manipulative i think that's kind of a thing <laughs> bit of a weakness of the west there thinking that they can manipulate events in other countries to weaken areas which will in turn strengthen the west um i'm talking governments now obviously not everyday people and um, that seems to be a kind of recurring thing that they do and doesn't often end very well i mean maybe it does end well if you have all the money in the businesses but it doesn't end well for every other fucker okay so that was that book i think we're done with that um another book i've been reading over the last sort of month or so and i thought i'd just give a little review about is this this is tom kerridge's dopamine diet and this is his low carb diet book he's lost a lot of weight doing a low carb sort of keto style diet and this is his cookbook to accompany that i try and do low carb um some things I find quite easy to cut out, sort of breads, pastas, potatoes, things like that. Cake is a little harder. Um, so, you know, I'm always interested to try new recipes. It, I think there is a difficulty in finding good low carb recipes. Um, I didn't love this book, I'll be honest. Um, not just because some of the meals came out looking really gross, but um, they also tasted a bit gross, so that's not great. Um, he seems to have some really, really overpowering flavours in a lot of his recipes. I mean, even when you're making it, you're thinking, do we really need this much onion or this much vinegar? And then you eat it and you're like, no, we really, we really didn't need that much. It's just way too much, really overpowering. Um, can't taste anything else, which makes you wonder why he did a stupid, complicated recipe. And many of his recipes are really properly overcomplicated as well. That was the other thing I didn't like. So I do do quite a lot of cooking and if i find recipes where there's like two three ingredients that not only have i never used i might not have even heard of it's like this is a bit stupid um and then some of them that i did do um he had really overcomplicated ways of doing things like where he would a normal person would just fry off some like mince like beef mince in a saucepan he's like no put it in the oven and roast it for half an hour and then break it up and till it's like coffee grains or whatever and it's just like no, just fry off the mince i haven't got extra half an hour to spare doing that pointless task 
Um, things that I did like in here was the moussaka. I thought that was really nice. And there was like a beef chili mince thing. That was really nice as well. Oh, and there was a bread. There was like an almondy, I think he called it like a soda bread or something, but it was like a sort of almond loaf, um, ground almonds. That was really nice. Um, but pretty much everything else that we have tried, I wouldn't try again. So I'm not overly impressed with that. Okay, so they're the books I've read. So not a lot really, because Tragedy and Hope was just like absolutely epic. Um, so what am I reading now? I am reading Why Formula Feeding Matters and that's going swimmingly. I'm absolutely flying through that. Um, so I'll give a proper review of that next time once I've finished it. And then I will read Cloud Atlas. I'm being nagged, <laughs> I'm being nagged to read it. Have you read it yet? No, I'm going to read it, it's my next book, I promise, I will read it. Whether I will have actually read it by next month, because it looks fairly substantial, um, we'll see. Okay, I think that's it. All right, so until next month, thank you all.